Sometimes there's things in scripture where people are like, I wonder, what, I wonder why that's significant. Like for instance, Isaiah 6, and when it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Why would that matter? Well, you know what? Uzziah means God, will, I mean, it means, means this means the strength of God. His, his dad meant God will strengthen. His mom's name meant God will enable. And, and what's interesting is it says that God helped him until he became strong. And when he started out in, in his, his position, he was very submitted to God. But the more he accomplished by the strength of God, the more credit he took for what God did. And then at the end, you see him getting out of his lane and not functioning as a king, but trying to function as a priest because he was no longer thankful for the position that God had given him. And one of the things I wanna encourage you is each of us have an opportunity to keep Uzziah crucified in us. Those areas that God wants to make us strong, that we would always give God the glory for his strength. Amen? And one of the things even today as we, as we talk about walking in newness of life, it's recognizing the small foxes that have tried to spoil, tried to spoil the vine. The thoughts, the beliefs, the words, the actions that have tried to work against who we're called to be. That maybe at one time seemed okay, but you recognize it may have been permissible, but it was not profitable. Amen? Also want to let you know, we've got exciting news this coming summer. We've really been praying into what God would have prepared for us as a, as a church family this summer. And, and I really feel like that we've landed on, on just kind of the blueprint of the Lord for Sundays throughout this summer. And so I've got great news for you next Sunday. Our very own Pastor Tim is going to be bringing the word. Come on. And he just has an incredible word about really for those who overcome, just not just the hidden manna, but also just this, this, this hunger and the importance of appetite in this season, the importance of process as it relates to your promise. Amen? Because a lot of times people can abort a process and fall short of a promise. I mean, even Jesus had a process. Not only did he get baptized, but then he walks in the wilderness for 40 days. The Israelites spent 40 years. So your process oftentimes is dependent on your promise and your willingness to submit to the process. Amen? And what happens is so many times people can get a promise and they can run with a promise, but they also run away from the process. And we gotta have process. Say process. Amen? And then on June 13th, we're gonna begin a series. It's actually gonna be a 10-week, nine-message series on the nine phases of, uh, of, of, of prophetic pregnancy. Because what happens is a lot of times people can get a word, but they don't know how to see that word come to pass. And so I'm gonna teach you for 10 weeks, the reason why it's a 10 week, nine week message is because on July 11th, Kingsway College is having a student takeover. And so that Sunday is gonna be all about Kingsway College. It's gonna be incredible. They're gonna be pouring out out of what God's doing in them throughout our summer word and spirit gatherings and outreaches and just incredible things. But it's just gonna be an awesome, awesome summer because one of the things I wanna see is we, 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 we've been blessed with an abundance of revelation. How many of you recognize that when you get around prophetic people, you get prophetic? When you get around people who hear God, you start hearing God. But we can't just be hearers, we have to be doers. And it's not enough to just get pregnant with promise, we've gotta bring it forth. And that's also why I thought it was so timely that we kick off this series on the day that we dedicate Willow Westmoreland to the Lord. Amen? Because if anybody knows about Partner with Promise, it's David and Kayla. And so throughout this summer, we're going to talk about the importance of proper positioning. We're going to talk about not only how to receive promise, but how to be planted in a place called promise. We're going to talk about what it looks like when your word begins to produce. We're going to talk about everybody's favorite season, pruning. Can you get cut and not quit? We're going to talk about promotion and persecution because they, they, listen, they come together, amen? We're going to talk about uh, what, what happens when the provision of your promise is unlocked. And then guess what? The series ends on August 8th, 8-8, eight, eight, New Beginnings, and that day is all about birthing. And so we're going to have a special birthing service as a culmination of our summer series that's all about your promises coming to pass. But this is a summer to take responsibility for your revelation. And I encourage you, as you plug in, not just to this series, but as you practice what we preach, because we're all going to be walking this out together, I promise you that not only will you move closer to what God has promised, but you'll be changed and you'll be transformed. And much of what you've been believing God to do for you, you're gonna recognize he's already empowered you to do for him. Are you with me? So it's gonna be an incredible series. Again, nine phases of prophetic pregnancy.
Because everybody loves to be pregnant in summer months, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> come on, let's just give it up for Sarah Pemberton. <laughs> I'll tell you, listen, if, if anybody who doesn't have Sarah Pemberton in your life, your life is incomplete. You know, not, not that the Trinity has taken applications for new membership, but if they were. <laughs> hey, turn with you to Romans chapter 6. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Because, listen, I, my, my commitment to you is to see you fully equipped, fully envisioned, to see, be fully endowed with what God has appointed and anointed you for. Because it's not enough to just get a word. We have to become a word. Yes. Amen? Yes. And what the world needs right now, yes, love, hallelujah, but they need more than love. They also need truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because love is being perverted, but truth is the baseline. It's the anchor. It's the standard. Yeah. And we have to recognize, what do I do when I get a word? How do I partner to see that word come to pass? And recognizing that it's not always easy, just like labor. There's seasons of transition when you want to quit. But if you don't quit, you'll have something beautiful in the process. And the truth is, is all of you have come way too far to quit now. I see the head. You're crowning with promise. Amen? Again, Romans 6 is going to be the predominant passage that we look at this morning. But, but even as we transition from Pentecost last week, I just want to read you these, this, is this small portion of Scripture from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter stands up and he says, repent, repent, change how you think, change what you speak, change how you live, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That word remission means the removal. They're erased from your account. I want to tell you, listen, baptism is not just an outward act. It's an inward decision. And, and your choice, the stewardship of your choice is actually one of the greatest weapons of spiritual warfare you've ever been given. And so I don't want you to get in and just get wet. I want you to have an inward conviction that leads to an external transformation to where everything about your life changes. That you don't make this decision to get baptized apart from repenting. See, because what you're saying is, I don't want to just get baptized today and live tomorrow like I did yesterday. We got to walk in newness of life. You have to, we walk out that decision. We walk out that choice. We don't just get in. We begin to make a decision based on what has got into us. When Philip was, was running alongside of the Ethiopian eunuch, and, and he's reading from the book of Isaiah, and he, he leans over to Philip and he's like, hey, and he starts asking questions about Isaiah. And, and he, he, the Lord had already been putting salvation on his heart. He'd already been putting baptism on his heart. He just didn't have anybody to explain to him next steps. He didn't have a Pastor Ashley to be able to share with him. Okay, so this is what you do now. Now that God is moving in your heart, here are some steps that you can begin to move with God. And as, as Philip is running alongside of the eunuch chariot, hallelujah, the eunuch says, what must I do to be baptized? What, what, what keeps me to be baptized? And, and, and Philip's answer is this. You, you got to believe. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You may be baptized if you believe. And see, baptism apart from belief means you just got wet. It begins with belief. Say it begins with belief. Begins with belief. And so the first thing we got to do is we have to repent from every other belief, every other mindset. Every other chicken little spirit of prophecy that is being broadcast at 5, 6, 10, and 11 o'clock. We, we have to break agreement. We have to divorce some false narratives and some false prophetic voices in our life and say, you know, I'm not going to allow any of how the world thinks to get into what I'm called to live. I'm going to repent. Amen? And what you're doing when you get in this water, you're saying... I'm, I, I, the life that I live, I no longer live in the flesh, but I live by faith in the one who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. Amen? So it goes on to say, that not only be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, but you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So repentance, baptism, and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit all go together. Amen? And we've been seeing the Lord gloriously filling people with the Holy Spirit. Yes, with the evidence of tongues, but I also pray for the manifestation of power. I love tongues. Hallelujah. Anybody love tongues out there? Right. But was, that, was, that was for my edification. No interpretation needed. Amen. <laughs> but Jesus said that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. And so I thank God for personal edification, but your personal edification lead, should lead to an external demonstration and manifestation. Amen. Yeah, Are you with me? Yeah. You know, because honestly, you know, praying in the spirit, yes, you build yourself up. Yes, you build up your faith. Yes, you speak mysteries back and forth to God. Yes, you're, you're, you're able to not only keep yourself in love and look for the mercy of God, it says in Jude, but also when you don't know how to praise you all, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for you. How many of you have turned up your tongue life here? Yeah. When you don't know what to pray, don't pray what you know. Pray in the Holy Spirit and pray the word. Amen. And then as you get the interpretation, you can pray with the understanding. But I want to also say, listen, don't stop short of power. And some of you may have put a four-foot ceiling on a 12-foot Holy Spirit. Today, we break that roof. Dunamis, power. The word for power in Acts 1-8 is dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite from. That means that your prayers cause things to blow up in a really good way. When was the last time your prayer blew something up? Prayers that blow things up are authored by the Holy Ghost. He blew up the day of Pentecost. Yes. Everybody had a way that seemed right, but man, it was wrong. But then it goes on to verse 39. It says, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all. Say all. all. So it's an invitation to everyone, but you have to make a choice to accept that invitation and to live according to the guidelines that God has laid out for us in his word. So it's available to all. And our prayer is that as many, of, as many of all as possible would accept that invitation and come to the party. Amen? But there is a choice. There is a choice. In fact, Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, if you believe and are baptized, you'll be saved. But if you do not believe, you will be condemned. And what's interesting to me is certain people are taking certain parts out of scripture right now. And they're all the parts that have to do with your responsibility. Yes, Jesus, the finished work on the cross, he finished what he was called to do so you could start what you were called to do. Amen. I celebrate the finished work, but I also recognize because of what he did, I've got a responsibility to one, believe and two, take the steps that belief looks like. Amen. We're going to look at what that looks like. And of course, Pastor Ashley is going to look at them in depth. Verse 40, and with many other words, come on, he was a preacher. That means he, he, he said more than he had to, hallelujah. <laughs> he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And so he gave the recipe of being saved from this perverse generation. And it was actually transformation. And, it was, and, and this was the steps, repent, be baptized, receive the gift. Isn't that awesome? How many of you are thankful that you've repented? How many of you are thankful for the, the opportunity, the privilege to be baptized? How many of you are thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit? Freely given and everyone who asks receives. Verse 41, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. Every time I say baptized, I, I want to say it in like a Nacho Libre voice. Yeah. Baptized. Everyone who gladly received his word were baptized. Why? Because they saw, wait a minute, my life doesn't have to look like it has. This guy just shared with me, there is a way out of the self-imposed misery that I've walked in up until now. And it's called putting to death the deeds of the flesh so that I can walk in newness of life. But it wasn't just being baptized it says that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And this is the type of church growth I'm believing for. Yeah. I don't want 3,000 people added to Kingsway because they left another church. 
I want 3,000 unbelievers overnight because the truth of the gospel is preached to them. Somebody came and knocked on their door, told them about Jesus, introduced the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and they said, what must I do to be saved? What can I do to be baptized? How can I receive this gift of the Holy Spirit that you tell me of? And how can I live my life according to this word? Because God has been misrepresented. He's either been presented as a harsh taskmaster or some sort of fairy tale wish. And he is God Almighty, creator of the universe, and he's with you. In Mark 16, not only does he say, if you believe and are baptized, you'll be saved, but he also says that God will work with you with accompanying signs and wonders. And God is not just wanting us to work for him, he's wanting to work with you. Amen? And he has the power to back up your preaching. But without you preaching the gospel, he has nothing to work with in the earth. Amen? Amen. The gospel must be preached. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And there are too many people that are ashamed of not being relevant. I'm not one of them. (laughs) And neither are you. It's time that we turn up preaching. It's time that we speak, we speak more boldly about the truth of this gospel and the simplicity of Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. And we, like Paul, can say, I count all things as dung, but the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Anything and everything else, it, can, it pales in comparison to knowing him, to knowing his ways, and the privilege of making him known. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? We've been called to such an incredible life in Christ Jesus. And baptism is an important step of answering that call. So not only did it say that those who, were, who, who received the word were baptized, not only did were 3,000 added, but they continued. Say continued. continued. And so today is going to be an important day, but today's not the end of the journey. It's a new beginning. We must continue and walk out the newness of life that God gives to us. Paul said in Colossians, as you receive Christ, so walk in him, abounding with thanksgiving. Amen? And one of the ways that we abound is to remain thankful. But here, he goes on, Peter goes on to say, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, sound doctrine, fellowship. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. There's something about relationships that will test what you think you know. Amen. And if it can't be tested, it can't be trusted. The breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And it is time for the fear of the Lord to come back to the church. Not to where people are afraid of God, but to where the decisions they make are are so navigated by reverential awe for the ways of the Lord. And say, you know what? I want my ways, I want my thoughts, I want my words to not just be a reflection, but to be revealing of your words, your thoughts, and your ways. Amen? That's what it looks like. We don't need to embrace a doctrine, well, we're sinners in need of a savior. No, you're sons. His blood is, like if you're saved, you're no longer meant to be a sinner. What we're going to see in Romans 6 is not only have you been, 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 been given the opportunity to receive the remission, the removal of sins, but you also don't have to have a sin nature anymore. But that, that, that begins in repentance. It's identifying areas where you've had a sinful nature. You've thought sinful thoughts. And sin not being, let me, let me think a bad thought and see how long I can get away with it. The root of all sin is fear. And what we're doing today in baptism is we're saying, I choose love over fear. I choose to give myself to love in the places that fear has tried to take me. Paul said, whatever is not from faith is sin. So fear is what causes us to miss the mark. Fear of rejection, fear of missing out, FOMO, hallelujah. Fear of loss, fear of what others may think. Let me just tell you, they don't. Half the people you're scared of what they may think, guess what? They may not even think about you. And guess what? You don't, want to make a, you don't want to make a decision based on what they may or may not think anyway. Because if you have favor with God, he'll give you favor with man. But oftentimes we compromise favor with God to seek the comfort that we think will come with the favor of men. But Puff Daddy said, more money, more problems. <laughs> Amen? 
Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Should we see how much we can get away with and still go to heaven when we die? Certainly not. Should we see what we can do? Or should we read this word and find out what we should do and what our life is supposed to look like? Because Jesus, Jesus, not, he didn't just set the example. He set the foundation that everyone who is in Christ is a new creation. New creation. It's not a new you. You're a completely new species. Invasion of the kingdom kind. The world doesn't need a better you. It needs a new, new you that looks just like him. Jesus came and turned every system on its head. And he was about to do it again. Verse 2, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live, in it, live any longer in it? And so what, we, what we're saying when we're being baptized is today I choose to crucify my sinful nature. I have been co-crucified, co-buried, that I could be co-resurrected. Do you not know, verse 3, that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Verse 4, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. And so what today is, for those of you who are choosing to be baptized, it's saying that today, May 30th, 2021, I am choosing to no longer walk in the same way that I've walked up until now. My good days in the past will no longer be a part of my present and my future because I'm choosing today to walk in newness of life and put to death everything that resembles my life without Christ. Amen? Putting to death the voice of crisis, putting to death sickness, put, putting to death stinking thinking. Amen. I love the passion translation of, of these two verses here. Let me read it to you, verse four. It says, sharing in his death by our baptism means that we were co-buried with him so that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. Buried and raised. We have been co-resurrected with him so that we could be empowered to walk in the freshness of, new, of this new life. And so the strength to walk in this new life doesn't come from you. It comes from your surrender to him. It doesn't come from you trying harder. It comes from you submitting to the work of grace in your life. Recognizing that still small voice. Recognizing that there's things that you used to enjoy that you no longer have a desire for. They no longer have an appetite. It's no longer appealing because that place in you they used to feed was removed in the water. You don't even have the operating system for that failed way of thinking. And what happens is when you get up out of that water and you hear the voice of your father saying, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased, from that day forward, you have a choice and that choice is tested the very first day. Jesus in Luke chapter four, gets, he gets baptized in Luke chapter three, the heavens are open, the, the, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove because he will rest and remain on the word of God in your life. To the extent that you give God's word a place in your life, the Holy Spirit will remain on you. But then what happens right after that? He gets taken into the wilderness. And his, 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 his choice, his surrender is tested. Because the very first thing the devil tries to get him to do is to promote himself. And so I want to tell you, something beautiful is going to begin today, but you've got to walk it out tomorrow. Yes. Amen? I'm not trying to talk you out. I want to let you know what you're getting into. Because the helper, the Holy Spirit will be with you every step of the way. And what happens is people get into this water and they get out and they recognize, you know what? I don't, I don't have the same desires and the wants that I used to have. That doesn't mean the devil won't bring the same thoughts. 
He'll bring the thoughts to you. He'll send the packages to the house to address the people who used to live there. Have you ever received mail from people who used to live in your house? It's illegal to open it. And if you open it, you're responsible for its contents. And so when you get up out of this water, there may be some thoughts that come tomorrow. There may be some thoughts that come Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even this afternoon. You may not even get out of the parking lot. But guess what? You don't have to bite those thoughts. You don't have to meditate on those thoughts. Because those thoughts may be to you, but they're not for you. Because what you're going to begin to recognize is, I know it's coming at me, but there's, no, there's nothing in me that has agreement with it. There's nothing in me that wants that. And what I've seen is the, the few times when I've seen people that come into a season of repentance, baptism, Holy Spirit, true life transformation, and then the thoughts begin to come. The ones who have not been able to walk out their salvation is because they allowed the thought to speak louder than truth. And they begin to wonder, and it caused them to wander. And it became like a forced behavior at first where they, they went back to an old way and it didn't feel right at first, but they did it out of routine because they were used to it. You can't do things that you're used to. You gotta choose every day to do what he calls you to do. Are you with me? Breaking habits that have caused you to be hung up. Some of you may have been a functioning alcoholic in times past. You could drink and nobody knew it. Guess what? People know it but they love you. They love you. And you don't have to do that anymore. And you can get in this water and you could have had, you could have had a, a, a hiccup yesterday. You could have had a problem this morning. But when you get out of that water, your yesterday and your this morning no longer have a voice in your present. Amen. But when the thought comes, well, I can just do this and I can do that. That's when you take that thought captive. You say, I can, but I won't because my life is worth more than that. My agreement is worth more than that because a precious price has been paid for me and I'm not going to do anything that would devalue what he gave everything for. You were, listen, you were not just, not only did he give his blood, but he gave his life. He wasn't just beaten. He was beaten beyond recognition. He allowed them to pull his face off so you could become his face in the earth. He allowed himself to be pierced so that you no longer had to be broken. Beautiful Savior. And he will give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. The Holy Spirit will help you walk this out. But I encourage you, lean in him. Lean on him. Look to this word. Some of you may want to choose some meal replacement moving forward. There may be some shows you don't need to watch anymore. Some music you don't need. Because listen, what goes in will come out. Amen? So, sometimes you can tell where somebody ate because of what comes out. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, when this comes in, everyone's going to know. You know, they, they're not trained. They're not educated. Even if they've been to Kingsway College, they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. Because when you get pressed, and this is what's in you, this is what comes out. Yeah. <sighs> and I want to tell you, yes, that is what the world needs, but also that is what you want. And your deepest desire, you were created with, 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 with a place in you that only God can fill. And everything else and everyone else other than God is going to cause that area to, to, to just feel rubbed and to feel raw and to feel lacking. But when God comes and fills it, he fills you to overflow. Yeah, and baptism is a part of that filling. Verse five, we've been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly we shall also be uh, in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. The old man was crucified with him. He don't live here anymore. That means when a thought comes to you that is not for you, you say, oh, that guy don't live here anymore. He moved, he dead. Even if they send an absentee ballot, he don't live there no more dead. Don't give him a vote. Don't get, hey, don't give your old man a vote in your new life. That'll preach. 
Our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. I love the Passion Translation of verse six. Could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? For we were co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. Baptism is the the statement, it's the expression that we have been co-crucified, co-justified, co-qualified, and co-glorified with Christ. We've been co-buried, we've been co-resurrected. And really, it's an act of spiritual warfare. It is an act of spiritual warfare. The thoughts we choose to think, what we choose to believe, the words we choose to speak, and the actions we choose to take are divinely inspired and empowered spiritual weapons of our warfare. Your choice is one of the greatest spiritual weapons. The free will that God has given to you is one of the greatest weapons when stewarded faithfully in the area of spiritual warfare. Because it's a choice to rejoice. As a spirit being, your thoughts, beliefs, words, and actions are not just simply natural. They are supernatural. And they release a ripple, not just in your life, but through your life into the lives of all humanity. In the same way that God said, let there be light and light never quit letting, When a spirit-filled believer makes a choice, chooses to think, believe, speak, and act, it releases reality that all the world can feel. And that's why all of creation is groaning for us to realize and to be awakened to who we are and to live like it each and every day. Amen? Verses seven and eight in the Passion Translation say, obviously a dead person is incapable of sinning. And you can just tell those thoughts that when they come. I can't do that anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. That ain't me. You say, well, that's going to sound crazy if I'm talking to thoughts. Listen, you better talk to some thoughts. You can't can't think yourself out of a thought. You got to talk your way out of it. You can't fight thoughts with thoughts. You got to fight thoughts with the word. The only way to change what's in your mind is by what's in your mouth. Amen. And if we are co-crucified with the anointed one, we know that we also share in the fullness of his life. So here are six great reasons to be baptized today. One, if you never have been. Jesus, Peter, Paul, Philip, and many others, of course, outline the biblical importance of being water baptized in addition to our salvation experience and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus plainly in Mark 16 says, to believe and to be baptized and be saved, those who do not believe would be condemned. And baptism and belief go hand in hand. Matthew 28, he says, go into all the world, what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then not only baptizing them, but also teaching them, making disciples of all men. And so baptism is a first step of discipleship. That's why it's so great that we have Pastor Ashley with next step discipleship in these next three weeks, because that empowers us to go. So part of making disciples begins in baptism, because it creates a fresh canvas that God can paint. The second great reason to be baptized today is Jesus was. Jesus was. Jesus who was without sin. But what did he tell, what did he tell John the Baptist? John the Baptist is like, I can't baptize you. You need to baptize me. He says, I got to do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. How many of you try to argue with what God wants to do in your life? Well, I can't do that. Just let me do this. He said, permit me to do this and I might fulfill all righteousness. The Passion Translation, Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Again, we're so familiar with New King James, which I love, but I really love just the life that comes out of the Passion Translation this. It says, Jesus left Galilee to come to the Jordan and to be baptized by John. But when he waded into the water, well, blind boys of Alabama came over there for a minute, hallelujah. John resisted him saying, why are you doing this? I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, and yet you come to be baptized by me. But see, revelation has to be stewarded. Jesus, I mean, John was the first one to recognize who Jesus was, but remember when John got into a situation where what he knew about God was questioned, he began to question if Jesus was God. Remember? 
Matthew 11, John the Baptist is in prison, sends his disciples, hey, ask Jesus, is he the one or should we look for somebody else? And Jesus sends him back. He says, tell John that the, the, the poor have the gospel preached, the blind see, the, the, the dead are raised. And he begins to start speaking back the prophecy of Isaiah 61. Because John the Baptist is going, okay, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Anointing to preach the gospel of the poor, recovery of sight, healing the brokenhearted, uh, opening of prison doors, and here I am. And Jesus said, oh, and tell him, blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And what happens is, is when your current situation comes, in, comes, into, comes into an opposition to what you feel like the fulfillment of your promise is meant to look like, you have a choice in that moment to be offended. And so here, John the Baptist is the very first one with the revelation, but the revelation had to be stewarded because if it's not cared for, you can find yourself quitting at the moment of your deliverance. Process. Amen? Process. Pastor Tim's going to be hitting it hard next week. We need it. I'm so excited about it. It kept coming up in seed form in meetings. I'm like, you need to preach that. It's awesome. Verse 15, Jesus replied, it is only right to do all that God requires. Man, that just makes everything so much simpler, doesn't it? it following Jesus really is simple. It really, I know people try to get weird and create courts of heaven, all kinds of other stupid stuff, but it is just so simple. It is so simple. People try to major on extra biblical, they end up unbiblical. Yeah. Follow Jesus. Follow, follow Jesus. Yeah. If you have trouble following Jesus, don't try extra stuff. Just follow Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's simple, folks. Well, I feel the pucker factor. <laughs> I touched somebody's courts. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's okay. You better get rid of it today. <laughs> people selling pipe dreams. Um, anyway, it is only right to do all that God requires. Then John baptized, come on back, y'all. Then John baptized Jesus. And as Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavenly realm up, opened up over him and he saw the Holy Spirit descend out of the heavens and rest upon him in the form of a dove. Then suddenly the voice of the father shouted from the sky saying, this is my son, the beloved. My greatest delight is in him. And you guys remember Noah's Ark when they sent the dove to see if there was, a, if there was dry ground, if the flood was over, if the destruction had come to an end and the dove had no place to land. But the dove had a place to land because the one the dove had looked to agree with for all of humanity was now on the scene. And I want to tell you, the dove is still looking for men and women to land on and remain on, to be that place to where not... And listen, I've heard people sometimes talk about like, how will we walk of a dove? You be all careful. Listen, I, I'm not the careful guy. I'm more of like much increase comes by the strength of an ox, Proverbs 14, 4. So what you don't have to do is to take on someone's conduct to have their faith. Because I think sometimes people say, well, I've got to look like that to have that. No, no, no. Hebrews 13 says, imitate their faith considering the outcome of their conduct. Don't, people try to imitate their conduct and lose the faith. They try to go after the external and lose the internal. Look at their faith. How did they get what they've got? What did they hear from God? And how can I hear that, practice that, and see that in my life as well? The third reason to get baptized today, baptism is an act of obedience. Again, Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. That's in red. That's in red. Baptism is an act of obedience. That's a great reason. Number four, there are areas in your life that are needing a fresh start and you're believing for God to do a new thing. Yes. In other words, you're like, hey, I, I need a new year now. <laughs> Anybody with me? I got great news for you. His mercy is new every morning. And today we get to repent and receive that mercy and his grace. Because mercy is about what you've done. Grace is what you're called to become. Yes. Amen? Amen. Fifth reason to be baptized today. You stepped into a new season spiritually. You're in a new place. You're newly aligned. You're newly assigned. You're newly anointed. And you want to dedicate this season to the Lord in a sincere and meaningful way. Another great reason to be baptized today. You've been battling certain besetting sins or reoccurring struggles. And you want to break free of those sins, break free of those cycles, Break free of those struggles and walk in new levels of the fullness of God's freedom in Christ. Am I talking to anybody today? 
Does anybody need a fresh start? Anybody need to break free from, from past cycles or present struggles? I didn't believe in cycles until I recognized them. It's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Until I've been like, well, you know, every year about this time, I got, you know, I got these stinking thing and thoughts, and then I got this, this fear that comes on me, and then I started digging into it and began to recognize, oh, there are some things that happened in the past that had created some trauma in me to where I had an expectation I didn't realize. And guess what? When I could repent of that and be cleansed of it and apply the word and the blood to those areas in my life, I broke the cycle. And you can break the cycle today. But like G.I. Joe says, knowing is half the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody remember G.I. Joe? I had to watch a G.I. Joe movie over the week. It was awesome. Had Bruce Willis and The Rock. It was awesome. Channing Tatum didn't last long. God bless his heart. Number seven. God has laid the desire to be water baptized on your heart and you want to be obedient to his leading. And so I want to close with this. If you're here today, and you've either already planned on being water baptism, water baptized. Again, I want to say it in a nacho voice. What baptized? <laughs> but they didn't fully immerse, so hallelujah. <laughs> if you're here and you, 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 you came ready and wanted to be baptized, God's already spoke to you. Or throughout the service today, you say, you know, I, I need a fresh start. I want to follow the leading of Jesus in my life. I want, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be an obedient follower of Christ. I want to take the next step in my walk with God. And I want to fully surrender all that I am to become all that he's called me to be. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Come on, let's just everybody just thank the Lord for these folks. So excited. David, I, I, uh, I was at the gym the other day and a cop buddy of mine, I think his last name was Golden, the um, bald guy, real buff. The, uh, I said, who did your tattoos? He goes, David. I said, Rankin? He goes, yeah. I said, yeah, he goes to my church. I said, he's coming to my college in the fall and he's getting baptized this Sunday. He goes, David Rankin? He goes, what are you, like a witch or something? I said, he was. I said, yeah, his tattoo studio burnt down over the altar to Satan. I said, it's awesome. And he's like, I mean, he always did good work. It was a cool dude to talk to, but some of that stuff was a little out there, Hallelujah. I said, well, listen, I said, you'd be so proud of the man of God that he's become because that's who you are. You're a man of God now. And I want to tell you, listen, when you get in that water today, that water is a sign of his word being applied to your life. And so what you're doing is you're coming in under the authority of the word. And when you go under that water, Everything that does not come under the authority of that word gets left behind. It's the only left behind I believe in. And when you come up out of that water, you're coming up with a fresh kiss of heaven. You're coming up in newness of life. And the glory of God will be your countenance. In Romans chapter 1 verse 4, it says that Jesus was declared to be the son of God by the spirit of holiness and the resurrection from the dead. And I want to tell you, there is a spirit of holiness that is going to come upon your life. There's a spirit of holiness in the places where the enemy has tried to get you to live in a way that was not holy. I just declare of you right now, a spirit of holiness will come upon your life. To it not be something you feel like you've got to force or put on, but it'll be a spirit that works in you, led by the Holy Spirit. Everybody stretch your hands out to these. And those who are Sam, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Because I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. We're gonna do this on mass. Because there's some, I believe there's even more people here today that will end up wanting to get baptized. But I want to ask each and every one of you standing, do you believe today that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God? Yes. Yes. Do you believe that He died for your sins, was buried, and rose again the third day? Yes. Do you believe that He sent the Holy Spirit for you to become just like Him? Do you believe that he destined for you to be a son and not to be a sinner? Yes. Yes. Jesus said in Luke 11, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And no matter what level you've been, you have received the Holy Spirit in times past, I want to invite you right now, just to ask the Father. You don't have to plead with him. The gift is already on, it's on you. 
but just ask him, say, Father, I want more of the Holy Spirit. I ask you for more of the Holy Spirit today. And I surrender myself to your word and to your spirit today. My life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. I give all that I am and receive all that you are. In Jesus' name. And according to the great commission to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, We're going to baptize you today in the name of Jesus and your life will never be the same again. I'm going to ask those who are standing to go ahead and slide out so you can go get changed. I'm going to ask those of you who are here who have children and King's kids to go ahead and go pick them up. And guess what? It's 1212. This This was a greater work. Hallelujah. My commitment this summer, my target time is 1230 because we're doing a series. I'm going to take one message and I'll preach it for nine weeks. And so I figured that, that would help me get you guys out here a little sooner. Amen? I'm not making any promises, but I have good intentions. I'm trying. Again, if you have children and kings, kids ask you to get them. If you're able to stay, there's something so beautiful that keeps us acquainted with the grace of God in our life that causes us to remain thankful for where God brought us from, what he's doing in our life, and also just simply celebrating the lives of our brothers and sisters. I'm gonna ask you to stay and to be a part of this, amen? But what I'd ask you to do is just move up on close, hallelujah. Get up so you can see the good stuff, amen? I don't know about you, I like to see the good stuff. I don't understand, I don't understand, like, sit where you want to, but I like to kind of sit up, I like to, I like to, I like to sit close, watch stuff, get close to the anointing, amen? But what I want us to do is I want us to celebrate when every brother and sister is coming out of the water like a new baby was born, because they were. I want the very first words they hear, the very first sounds they hear to be celebration of their surrender. And I encourage you to ask the Lord, ask the Father for prophetic words for them. Ask the Lord. And I know sometimes it's not always the best time when someone's coming off and they're trying, they're wet and they're trying to get changed and all of those things. But one of the things that's great is to write those words down. Write them down. Because if you write it down, they don't just hear it. Because a lot of times you can hear it, but you don't remember it. Sandy had a great dream when she was on vacation that she shared with me last week that really ministered to my heart. Then I had it this week. I said, hey, can you write that down and send it to me? Because there's some things in that that I, I think I remember, but I'm not sure I remember it the way you said it. And I want to go back and make sure that I get it. Amen? Because when you see what the Father says and you look at that, it causes you to see new things every time you look at it. Yeah. Amen? So if you have a pen, you have paper. Actually, everyone does because there's offering on lips and seat pocket in front of you. There's <laughs> pens. Ask the Lord. Father, what do you want to tell them on this first day of the rest of their life? 